Welcome to Tying Telco Together. It's a program where we dive into the successful transformation stories from service providers all around the world. This week, I'm talking with Razvan Ungarianu, Group CTO from Airtel Africa. We're going to be discussing how they're automating their operations to advance telecom services in their market. You know, as networks are becoming, you know, more distributed and as they start to transform, they're becoming inherently more complex, which is why I'm super excited to have this conversation with a leading service provider such as Airtel Africa. With that being said, let's jump straight in. The communication service provider industry is rapidly changing. You know, if I blink my eyes, it feels like something new is happening each second in our industry. You know, there's so many different challenges and opportunities. It's really becoming an issue of prioritization and focus. Can you explain how Airtel Africa is approaching these market shifts and what you're doing to determine your transformational strategy? Thank you. Thank you, Stephen. So uh, first of all, before starting, I would like to introduce uh, Africa as a, as a very challenging market. So if you are discussing about our territory, the size of the continent, which is huge, just to give you a, a comparison, uh, India is three quarters of, um, of the DRC, which, which is just one country. If I take a flight from uh, Nairobi to go to Lagos, which is one of my markets, it's a five hours flight. So the, the territories are huge, huge instances with the challenge of the grid availability, security issues, weather. So we are crossing, um, Equator is crossing one of the many markets and we are facing uh, the tropical rains, uh, the thunderstorms and so on. So very challenging environment to, to operate. And that's why uh, it's making our mission more complicated, but in the same time exciting. Who can uh, adapt and survive in this type of environment obviously will strive and will have a lot of uh, reward on that. Uh, in relation with the marketing, uh, with the market, marketing is very, uh, very interesting. A lot of untapped opportunity, starting from uh, uh, data. So whatever is mobile data, uh, the handset itself is the gate of the people to the world. They don't, they, they replace with the, with the mobile a lot of devices that exist in a normal household, like a TV, like uh, the, the laptop, like uh, whatever. So whatever internet needs, they, 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 they have, they use it through the the handset. Uh, afterwards, mobile money. It's a very developed market. So uh, there are services in Africa that you don't find in Europe. If I want to do a person-to-person -person transfer in, money, in terms of money instantaneously, I can do it in, uh, in Africa. That is not happening in other markets in the, in, or parts of the world. If it's uh, enterprises as well, a lot of requests in terms of security, um, communication which are safe in terms of resiliency, uh, in terms of um, real-time uh, data, uh, so a lot of untapped opportunity from that perspective as well. Don't forget as well the big amount of resources in terms of gold, copper, and so on are uh, are extracted from Africa. Obviously, as a as a part of that, as a part of the strategy and transformation strategy that you you touch a point, our part of the strategy is being bring the data centers to the edge. This is um, edge sounds logical if you are thinking about 5G because you want to bring the content as close as possible to the customer. But uh, we are thinking about the um, economy and the agility of bringing the data centers and, and moving them to the edge and to the cloud in the same time uh, as, a, as a powerful way to transform the network. Those cannot be ap uh, applied, I would say, in the vacuum. They are fully, fully um, uh, let's say, enabled by the partnership that we have with various service providers that will help us to unify the architecture and lev leveraging the two aspects of it, which is virtualization and cloud technologies. Super. Well, yeah, it's definitely a, a logical step. I, I, I view Edge as the next real frontier for CSPs. I mean, the, the economics are changing and there's some great opportunities there with introducing cloud native technologies, as you said. I'd love to understand a little bit more about how Airtel Africa is building that bridge to the edge and what it means regarding the services that you're going to enable in the market. You know, all starts from um, totally different angles compared with other operators. So in Africa, business continuity, it's a, it's a key element. And who is able to build a network which is available, always on, what I'm calling. Why? Because 80% of the customers, they have dual SIM. So if your network is off, automatically part of your revenues, 90, 90, more than 99% of the revenues are coming for, for, for prepaid. 
So if your network is off, you lost at least one month's revenue, which is a disaster. Mm. So network availability is very important for us. So that's why we are building special architectures to address the issues of um, network availabilities. So if you take a typical network in, uh, in Europe, a uh, data center is built typically uh, based on the two-way direction fiber connection. We are building actually in Africa three or four ways fiber connectivity in order to secure 99.99 availability or 3.59 availability. And actually we are moving towards the edge because of that, not because of 5G architecture. We want to place the, the, the content as close as possible to the customer, as secure as possible and various, various means, which means microwave, fiber, satellite. That is the fundament of moving data center to the, to the, to the edge for us. That's the reasoning. In order to do it efficiently, obviously we are discussing about virtualization, we're discussing about cloud, because obviously the resources to manage that has to be, uh, I can't send a, uh, any resource in any location to do that. I have to manage them efficiently. I have to work with standard hardware, so I have to uh, virtualize, obviously, in order to reduce the, the cost. Based on that, many other opportunities are occurring. So for instance, if I build a data set onto the edge and I build it on a virtualized data center, Based on my NAV, where I can deliver my core at the edge, core functionalities, I can connect, for instance, enterprises. I can mobile, um, deliver mobile edge computing to them. So any IT services that they have, let's take example of a gold mine in Africa. They have their own data centers. They have their own accounting. They have their own servers that are managing their machines. Why they should bother in the middle of Africa, in the middle of jungle to, to have an IT guy man maintain that when I can deliver anyway because I deliver the mobile communication and enterprise communication, I can ent they can be a session on my, on my machine, basically. So this open a full panel of opportunities in terms of private networks for us. And here I see a huge potential on top of securing and moving more our network to the edge. And uh, those are the specific use cases that we want to address. You know, as I speak to more customers about the edge and their strategies, you know, enterprise customers as well as CSPs, the enterprise customers, to, you know, for them, edge is their business. It's productivity. It's you know, insight into the operations and things like that. And uh, obviously, things like availability, as you mentioned, are absolutely critical. If you're going to bring more of that infrastructure to the edge, and you're going to rely on it as a company, you need to have high availability. That's a that's a great point. You know, the everything you've just mentioned is, from my perspective, great progress for the market, Razvan. Um, as we talk about the importance of that underlying network, you know, one specific capability that I think needs to be addressed is automation. Can you describe a bit about the role of automation and how it plays in the transformation of your market and also your business? Yeah, thank you. I think it's a very good question. You know, I'm a, I'm, I will say I'm not atypical CTOs. I don't work, I don't go for the buzzwords. Every uh, GSM World Congress, you go there and you hear some buzzwords, everybody comes and repeat them and they want to put the money on it. I see automation for me, not because everybody speaks about it, but I really believe on it because I have a very high motivation for it. So one of my key problems in Africa is the shortage and presence on the, on the ground of the skills. So if you take a country like um, uh, Chad, Niger, even remote areas of DRC, how can I find a very high skilled guy in uh, in NFV, in uh, maintaining my hardware, even IP skills and so on. It's very complicated to find these type of guys. So, so the idea and the need for automation comes almost automatically. So actually, I'm surprised that the very advanced markets uh, are going so quick on it because basically they have the skills, they have everything, they can manage everything manually without even uh, uh, needing that. For me, it's a matter of survival and uh, scaling up and uh, reducing the cost, actually. Or even, even if I want, I can't pay that cost because I don't have anybody willing to go in that area. So for me, uh, data center uh, and core built with virtualization and cloud on top of automation, it's, it's, it's a must. So basically, we are, we'll be building virtualization, virtualization of data centers in whatever it's orchestration, whatever it's um, manipulation of uh, hard drive, uh, scaling up and scaling out, down based on consumption. Everything it's, it's, should be automatic and managed in a, in a central way. Obviously, we have to address some regulatory aspects because certain regulatory, they don't want data customers to go out of the country. And we, obviously, we have to respect the law of the country and we'll manage that. But basically, um, 
the amount of skills and sh skill shortage will be the main driver for us. And obviously, as a consequence of that, uh, the outages will be shorter. Uh, basically, we are work working in a, in a very um, high level and sophisticated NOC. We, we have actually one of the most sophisticated ne network operation centers. This is built in, in a high level of automation, artificial intelligence and machine learning. So basically, we learn from the past whatever operation that has been solved, solved, for instance, with a software reset, and the system will apply it automatically. So whatever was in the past a matter of hours to solve an incident is solved in a matter of seconds. So this is the way that we are imp implementing automation. And we, obviously, we have the intention to go even more forward than that. We want to go in the preventive part in such a way that any system prone to fail to act in a proactive way and, re and apply the reset or re configuration change. And another aspect, obviously, will be the network healing. So whatever rerouting, re re network reconfiguration, and um, self-optimization network as well is, is part of it, it will happen on, in, a, in an automatic way. So obviously, as a consequence of that, we will, will be having an improved customer experience. And obviously, we'll be looking uh, of enabling probably new revenue streams. Yeah, it's interesting you mentioned the scarcity of skills. It's uh, prevalent in many markets and, uh, you know, many CSPs I see, they talk to all the time are moving more towards AI assisted operations, get more out of that, if you will, technology when they, like you said, can't find good people or um, their environments are just so large and complex that they could never put enough eyes and hands and, you know, keyboards behind that operation. It's just the, you know, what we have with 5G is just growing exponentially in scale and, and complexity. You know, and as, as this network continues to grow in complexity, you know, and you bring in new vendors, you bring in cloud providers, new services, and they all come into the fold, the importance of automation is going to be paramount, in my opinion. Here at VMware, um, we look at a, a multi-cloud, multi-vendor automation strategy as a central nervous system for 5G operations. And with that in mind, I'd love to talk a little bit about 5G itself. You know, Razvan, we started this conversation by highlighting some of the unique qualities of the market in Africa. Can you speak to your plans about 5G, the kinds of services and things you're going to do in the market? Uh, and what are your kind of next steps around 5G? Yeah, 5G, is a, it's a topic that comes over and over. Any interview that I have, everybody is asking about our strategy in 5G. My answer is always about being reasonable. So let's look of Africa market, and not all, even uh, even Africa market. Let's lo work look worldwide. So we are, sp if we speak about five G, we are working on an ecosystem where the core uh, for five G is just starts to be to be um, mature. I'm discussing about standalone rollouts. So uh, NSA is for me, it's almost like a rollout in four G. You don't see really a differentiation on right. that. So for me, what really matters is the standalone rollouts. So for rollouts, they have we have six to nine months. Experience for the laws they just come out. A lot of lessons learned will come. So for me, there is no maturity on that. Second, the product itself. If you look of the radio part, if you look of the three components which are very important for us because we don't own our own towers, we are hosted in the tower coast. Mm -hmm. So there are three components which are very important. One is the power consumption. Second, it's the the volume and the the size and the the weight. So with the actual contracts that we'll have, if I'll be deploying 5G, actually will be a disaster for our EBITDA. All, all the gain that we, we, we made from 2016 until now will be lost. And obviously we don't want to have a lost business. We want to have a winning business. So there sh should be a rationale for that. Third component of it, it's having the spectrum. So for the moment regulatory, from the regulatory landscape, there are very, very, there are some shy trials. Everybody wants to do a trial. But there are no uh, official, uh, and we didn't motivate it as well. There are no uh, official um, bids for the 5G spectrum. We have to secure big chunks of spectrum because just doing uh, 5G using DSS for me it's it's a way it's a way just to do check in a box. I've done 5G. I saw many countries actually when you you go in a DSS, uh, you make a st test action. Actually, 5G speed test is lower than the 4G, and you ask yourself why you have done 5G. Just to make a check in a box doesn't doesn't it's not worse to do that. It's about securing new frequency bands like 3,500 millimeter wave, like like is happening in US. I don't believe really very short term millimeter wave it will be a, a good business in uh, in Africa, just for the coverage and number of size that has to be rolled out. 
but I truly believe 3,500 using a massive MIMO could make a deal because basically you can tap on the coverage one to two kilometers to the half to the five kilometers, which is making sense for the dense urban areas. So uh, we need to secure 60, 80, 100 megahertz there. And that is not done yet. That has to come as well. So one, one, one last element that uh, is important for us is the, um, is the vendor landscape. So for the moment, we have only two vendors, Nokia and Ericsson. Uh, you know very well the geopolitics and the issue of the Chinese vendors. So um, I can't go in a rollout with only two vendors. So I'll be in the high, under huge pressure for cost. And Open Run for me, it's still a fashionable world. Um, I made, uh, if you look at our figures, offers that we receive, they are 20 to 30% more expensive. I know there are other people claiming 40% cost reduction. We don't see that. And everybody actually claims that we still have to wait two to three years until the technology gets matures. They don't have features. We cannot do DSS, uh, power consumption, power, uh, power output, a lot of uh, drawbacks. So I don't see that coming very soon. So all on that, I see that it's not the right moment, window of opportunity to roll out 5G. We are rather preparing the fundamentals of that, which means preparing the data centers, preparing them to be as reliable as possible, uh, moving to the cloud and virtualization of the core. That means I'll be ready anytime for 5G core and densification of our fiber. So basically we are looking for ratios one to two, one to three, every second or third side to be connected to fiber. That will allow us a very quick uh, rollout of the 5G network. So basically those are the preconditions that I'll say in, in order to see uh, and obviously, we will be following up very closely the Hansa penetration, which is a paramount to, to think about a new technology rollout. So those are the, the key elements that I'll be looking in order to uh, discuss about uh, massive 5G rollout. It's a fascinating glimpse into the market in Africa. You know, there's so many challenges that you've just gone through. I can understand uh, why you're doing the crawl, walk, run as you move towards the future with 5G. Razvan, I want to thank you for being a part of today's Tying Telco Together series. And I also hope that we can catch up in the future to learn more about the exciting progress that Airtel Africa is ma making. Thank you again, and I hope you have a great day. Thank you very much, Stephen. Hope to see you soon.